How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring you along with me to show you a comparison of using your iPad versus a desktop for editing on Lightroom. So let's jump right into it. So currently I want to do a comparison because I got the iPad 8th generation with 128 gigabytes of memory space and I want to compare it to see how the files look, how the ease of use is and if there's any compression at all from using the Lightroom on the iPad versus the desktop and if there's any difference in quality to maybe showcase if you're going to be needing an iPad better for editing or if you want to get a laptop or desktop for editing purposes. So we're going to be going a little bit through pros and cons for each device just to see what would work best for you as a consumer and as an editor to see what would make sense to invest in more for editing. I'm going to be using the same photo that's in raw format for the Lightroom in the iPad and also on the desktop just to compare for basically everything to make sure it's the same, the same edit applied to it and everything like that just to show you the quality and if there's any difference whatsoever when I export the photos and to compare them side to side. So first of all, I wanna go through the pros and cons of using an iPad for editing. The pros right off the bat is, well, you can edit anywhere that you want to on the go and it's not so bulky when it comes down to like a laptop or anything like that because I know you can take a laptop on the go but for the sake of it this is just a lot slimmer a lot smaller and very good ease of use when you're on the go honestly the app itself is very fluid and handles the file sizes very well I've been using my Sony a7R 3 files which have more information than the a7 III because of the higher megapixels and everything and it's been holding up to it very well when it comes down to the editing and the importing and everything in between so for that it's a pretty good pro because well for the price point of this ipad i believe is like 450 uh, with taxes and everything like that you can get such a powerful machine for editing and everything like that just straight onto your ipad and to be honest another pro is that it's easy to use as it would be on the desktop everything is fairly the same there's some minor key changes here and there that you can't do like if you would be on the desktop but other than that it's very easy to, easy to use compared to the desktop version is pretty much almost the same now we're going to talk a little bit of cons when it comes down to editing on your ipad first things first the screen size is not horrible but it's not the best thing to use like compared to a 34 inch monitor or 32 or 15 inch or 17 inch or 12 or 13 inch kind of monitor that you can get on a laptop or if you get an external monitor or if you get the iPad Pros that have the bigger screens. One thing that I did notice when it comes down to the editing part, if I go with kind of going into the color section for the mix and everything like that, using the sliders can sometimes be a little bit annoying, especially if I'm using my um, Apple Pencil itself. I'll try to kind of use it sometimes and it just gets a little bit too slippery. So what's one of, that's one of the things that I didn't kind of like because at least in my computer I know that I can click on it and put the number value that I want in as well in case that I can't get it to the exact number that I want to. So at least here I didn't really notice that you could do that. So that's a little bit of a cons for me. Nothing horrible because in reality you just get used to it and it's a lot faster as you do it. Now as for pros and cons when it comes down to a desktop and or laptop, the biggest pro is, well, it has more juice to be able to handle a lot more files, so you can import a butt ton of files, so you can edit a lot more files on the go in just one sitting, basically. Like I said, another pro would be the screen size itself compared to the iPad. Currently, I have a 32 inch monitor, I believe it is. I can't remember if it's 32 or 34, but the size of it helps me out to just edit a lot more fluid like and just get a lot of the edits just more complete so that I can make sure that everything looks just smoother and I can look at imperfections that I want to see and get rid of them faster just to make sure everything looks as professional as possible. Obviously another pro is if you are using a laptop well you have the same thing that you can edit on the go a little bit bulkier than it would be with an iPad but overall still pretty great to be able to edit on the go and you still get a pretty good amount of power when it comes down to editing on a laptop. And one thing that you can't really do that well on the Lightroom versus on the iPad versus the desktop, in my opinion, is the ease of use to, to transfer your file from Lightroom to Photoshop 
onto the desktop versus the, the app in the iPad. You can export it, but you don't get the same things that you can do as you would on a desktop Photoshop just yet. So until they kind of get that down where you can do almost and everything almost the same as the Photoshop on the desktop, I think obviously that's a bigger win when it comes down to a laptop or desktop itself. For example, you can use other apps like the Affinity Photo, which is a really good top-notch one-time fee uh, uh, Photoshop, and I've done a video about that before, and that would be great and all, but having to export the files and everything like that, it's just a little bit more of a hassle versus losing almost no quality when you're exporting from Lightroom desktop to Photoshop desktop as well, and just kind of sending it back and forth and edit however you want to a little bit faster. So that's one of the biggest pros in my opinion when it comes down to editing on your computer itself versus an iPad. So some cons obviously for the desktop is if you actually have a desktop, you can't edit on the go. And also when it comes down to your laptops, if you're not sometimes connected to a power bank or anything like that, you don't get the full potential of your laptop. So that can be a little bit of a con. Sometimes it'll get a little bit slower because it can't use as much power, which is understandable. These are kind of made for how they are to be used on the go. So this will kind of retain that power nonstop. And the most obvious con when it comes down to a laptop and a desktop versus an iPad is the price difference. I mean, my desktop itself is around $2,000. My laptop was about $1,700. This is $450 ish. So that's a big difference when it comes down to the power of editing on a desktop and or laptop versus an iPad. So if you're on the budget or if you want something that's more user friendly with ease of use and also budget, well, an iPad might be best for you. So now let's get into the quality of the files and see how well do each software and app work best on their respective device. So we're gonna see how it looks onto the the iPad itself first and then we're gonna go into the desktop and then show you the export and everything and see how they look side to side. So I'm currently now on the mobile app for Lightroom. So right now I'm gonna zoom in on the photo, show you a little bit of the quality. I mean, I uh, had a little bit of ISO grain basically. So I don't know if that's just here on the good old uh, iPad that it just makes it look a lot more compressed because it can't handle the file, but from afar it looks perfectly fine this is the edit basically so if i do the holding it down right now you'll see the before and this is the after just to kind of retain that information that i did so overall right now i mean you can see like the sliders and everything like that that you have i mean they're pretty great you got the light area where you can just edit the the light of the photo you got your exposure contrast highlights i mean that's just basically kind of already edited how I wanted it to, so I'm not gonna really mess with that. And that's not really about an editing tutorial, but more about just showing you the, the devices themselves and how they work best. I mean, you got your color tab, so you can do your color mixes and have all the colors there. You can close that. You can do this thing about color grading, which I haven't really used as much just yet, but that's an option that you can do. And then you also have your effects tab where you can do some texture clarity, dehaze, vignetting, and everything like that your details, if you wanna get rid of some sharpening or add sharpening, your noise reduction, geom uh, geometry, basically to kind of make everything upright, leveled, and so on and so forth. You can also have your presets added right there. Um, so yeah, just kind of like a little bit of things, your crop, your blemishing tool for healing and cloning. This one you can add more, um, you know, if you wanted to add basically your little, um, graduated filters and everything like that but i don't want to add them already did so yeah i mean it has a lot of good information it shows you the original image the file name when was it taken and everything like that so this was on our trip to dallas when we were celebrating our anniversary so we went and did some street photography and everything like that so that, that's something that I thought was pretty cool with this iPad. I was able to edit this photo there actually. And then I did the same thing on my desktop to show you now the comparison. So we're gonna jump into the desktop now and I'm gonna show you the edit itself and then I'll export them both and show you side to side. All right, so we're here now in Lightroom on the desktop. So you have here obviously all your adjustments that I just kind of showed you with the iPad itself. So. Basically, I have all the same adjustments that I had on the 
iPad and now on here as well. So if you look at it, I have all the, the same edits, the same temperature, everything in between. So, I mean, the, the, the desktop version is gonna have a little bit more information, which is uh, kind of understandable since it's supposed to be, I guess, more extreme, but it has pretty much everything the same. I mean, you just have some other stuff that you can add and whatnot, but yeah, that's basically just, you know, showing just what it is, all the details and stuff like that, lens correction, I mean, transformation, same thing. I mean, doesn't, don't really care to go too much in detail for it, but that's just basically the, the editing that you would have. I mean, if I zoom in, I still see the same, about same grain, I guess. I'll zoom in on both just to show you a little bit, um, what's it called, to show you how it looks, just to see, here's the zooming in on both. I mean, uh, pr pretty much they look the same grain to me, to be honest, so that's kind of a, a good sign already that they might be the same overall file size and no compression whatsoever from the Lightroom mobile iPad kind of version versus the desktop version of it as well so that's pretty good to to know um right now i'll probably i'll probably just kind of edit um i mean export these both and then see how they look side to side all right so i have here both now the photos side by side next to each other just kind of showing you how they look i mean the one on the left is the ipad edit and the one on the right is a desktop edit so i'm just gonna zoom in and kind of bring them all the way in as uh Pretty much just to see that's the iPad edit let's uh, bring this one in as much as well try to get them as close as possible with the good old uh, let's see 80 to I guess 70 and, or let's see what it was uh, let's go to 70 that way we're not like two up in the face so that's basically the side to side right there. I mean, they look exactly the same to me. So honestly, I don't see much of a difference in quality. I mean, they look about pretty much all the same right there when it comes down to the grain and everything in between. So um, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool to see that you can have a really good export with the iPad versus the desktop. So like I said, if you're looking for a file basically editing machine that you can edit good quality photos an ipad is not the worst way to go for 450 dollars compared to what laptops are that have enough juice to run programs like this so that, that's pretty pretty nifty to see that the, the quality for both files so there you go i mean i thought the files were going to be compressed when it came down to editing the photos and everything in between but to my surprise, I mean, the iPad files held themselves together and there was no compression that I could tell personally versus the desktop version of them. So that's something that's really cool and handy because when you're wanting to edit on the go, now you're not gonna be as, I guess, debateful about knowing if you wanna edit on your iPad versus your desktop for losing quality. So that's kind of cool to know for when it comes down to editing on the go. So now the ultimate question would be is, should you edit on iPad or a desktop or laptop? And it all comes down to you. What do you wanna create and what do you wanna do and what do you wanna you know, edit? What makes life easier for you when it comes down to creating and editing? So for me, I like both. I mean, to be honest, the iPad was really great when I was on, on the go and now when I was on my little trip and I was still in the hotel that I didn't wanna bring my laptop just to not carry too many things since I had all my camera gear. But in all honesty, I do prefer editing on my desktop just because I can be a little bit more comfortable with my chair and the bigger screen. And just when I wanna edit a lot of photos, it just seems a little bit more fluid to me to just edit on the go with my desktop like a faster pace versus the iPad. I mean, I'm sure you can kinda figure out a rhythm and then it'll make sense, so it's all up to you. But for me, I mean, I have both, so I can just kinda, just depends on my mood, I guess. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. But for all honesty, just because of how I file manage, it makes more sense for me to do on my desktop. Eventually I'll figure out a better system so I can file manage from my iPad and my desktop just fluidly since they're not Mac oriented. I can't just airdrop everything easy like that. But 
yeah, still pretty great to see what you can do with an iPad, the eighth generation, versus even the iPad Air, I'm sure it's great. I mean, my wife has that one. I didn't want to get that one because I don't really edit too much on an iPad, like I said, so I didn't want to spend that extra like $300 or so that it would be to get the 256 gigabyte iPad Air, you can get the little keyboard and that's great and all, but to me, it just didn't make sense to upgrade that much. I had the sixth generation iPad and the only reason I upgraded was because it gave me like $200 trade-in and also the memory space is I had a 32 gigabyte iPad, so I couldn't really do anything with it when it came down to editing. So now I have the 128, which is a great iPad. It's a great machine. It's just fast and everything. So it's pretty cool to have now. It's a little bit bigger as well from the sixth generation. So that's something as well that just kind of helps out but with all that said and done guys thank you so much for watching this video make sure to like and subscribe share this video with a friend and i'll catch you guys in the next one see ya